We're here with Professor Eric Graff, the writer and host of uh, Universidad Francisco Marroquin's new MOOC, Discover Don Quixote de la Mancha. Welcome, Eric. It's good to be here, Zach. So, Eric, uh, you recently launched a course uh, here at UFM on Don Quixote. Don Quixote is a very old book. Why should anyone study Don Quixote in the 21st century? It's the 400th anniversary of the publication of Don Quixote in its entirety. So if you have any sort of calendric sense of, uh, of duty to Western European culture, uh, it's a good time. Uh, they've just disinterred uh, Cervantes from his tomb in Madrid. It's the first modern novel. Most critics have agreed to that at this point. It took him about 50 years to finally uh, convince most uh, humanists, most students of the novel would point to Don Quixote as the first novel. So if you're interested in creative fiction, if you're interested in the history of the novel in any way, this would be the, uh, the text to take on. Um, it's also, uh, I think, extremely funny book, and I would make the argument that Cervantes makes in a lot of his um, prologues that uh, life can't all be about uh, going to mass and uh, earning money and uh, being serious. Uh, humor is a really important facet of the human condition, and this novel uh, is groundbreaking in that respect as well. So Eric, you've also, you've also argued that uh, Don Quixote is a sort of deceptively radical book. What are some of the elements that you think make it very radical, especially for its time? The most radical thing is the, uh, the length and the combination of different genres that he uh, undertakes. Uh, it's not as if this is the first piece of narrative fiction, but we do consider it the first novel for a number of reasons. Uh, it anticipates what we would today consider uh, a novel. It has access, for example, to the interior feelings and thoughts of a number of the characters. And that actually grows over time. Uh, as you get into the second part, it, it gets more and more intense. You have more and more access to what people are thinking and feeling. It's also this combination of all these previous genres. There's pastoral, there's the chivalric, uh, there's these urbane sort of love stories um, that make it uh, unique. It's, it's not recognizable, at least for readers in the 17th century, it wasn't recognizable as one particular type of novel. And paradoxically, that's what makes it the first modern novel. And I think that's what makes it such a radical experiment in genre. Uh, there's other radical aspects to it. I, I think that the, uh, the, the way the novel actually reflects on itself, the way uh, a major topic, if not the major topic of Don Quixote, is the novel itself. So we have moments where different narrators actually address us as readers, address each other, address uh, characters within the novel. So there's this extremely complex structure that is even postmodern in many ways. Cervantes not only invented the first modern novel, many would say he invented the first postmodern novel. You have characters who are conscious of being characters in a piece of fiction, for example. Uh, one character will tell another, uh, I've been reading about you. Uh, I, I have a copy of your novel, of the novel that's about you. And, and this creates this sort of momentary existential crisis <laughs> for, for other characters, uh, but they deal with it. So in that sense, uh, if, you've, if you've thought of a narrative trick, if you've come up with a radical thing to do with narrative fiction, uh, odds are Cervantes has already done it. Your passion for this topic and, just, and, and for Don Quixote in general is really clear in the course. And I'm curious to know, how did you end up interested in Don Quixote, especially as an American? I fell in love with the Spanish language, for starters. Uh, and the Quixote, again, <laughs> Uh, it really, really does uh, demonstrate an appreciation for the Spanish language on the part of uh, Cervantes. So it has this beautiful, endearing, uh, captivating aspect to it. Um, it's also, I think, the challenge. I, I, I really love the challenge. Uh, I remember when I was in graduate school, uh, a lot of my colleagues went off and did things that were very specific. They found very specific, unstudied areas. And I think learning something about one of the most commented texts in history, one of the, the most important texts in history, uh, is an is a exciting challenge. Uh, and what's really interesting is that there's still, I think, plenty to do. Uh, no one should be intimidated by how much has been written. There's a lot out there. Uh, we try to filter much of this down in this course. Uh, and I think you'll find that there's, there's plenty still yet to be done. Uh, 
there's, there's new things that can be said about this novel, just about uh, every, every chapter, every page. So Don Quixote, let's say, uh, broke into the genre of the novel, and you and the team around you is trying to do something similar as far as MOOCs and online education is concerned. Can you talk about what's going on with this MOOC? We're trying to innovate in the realm of online education. Uh, and I think in many ways we're all infected with the spirit of, of Don Quixote and Cervantes. This, this is, I think, the ideal text to attempt this sort of radical experimentation. Uh, and one of the beautiful things about uh, online education is the way you are allowed to combine all of these different aspects of uh, the technology to expand the possibilities. So, so basically, if Cervantes breaks down the walls, the barriers between uh, himself or his characters and readers or even other characters in other novels, we're doing something similar in terms of the traditional classroom, right? We're, we're breaking down the traditional barriers or the traditional format of students going into a a room or a lecture hall and listening to a professor uh, share his knowledge, right? We, we have forums. We want students to participate collectively and interact and exchange ideas with each other. We have videos of uh, my lectures as well. We've supplemented those videos with animation and maps and uh, text that you see uh, displayed when I'm talking about particular passages. So in that sense, it's a very sophisticated, it's much more than what you would see, I think, in your traditional classroom. Um, we're also, we have uh, an artist that has done specific drawings of, for each of our videos, uh, and that forms a uh, discussion starter for different, uh, different forums. We have uh, online uh, tests. We've, we've incorporated gamification. We turn your progressive uh, mastery of the, of the novel into a series of um, badges that you would get or insignias. So we really are trying to push the limits, and I think we're probably going to innovate as we go. I think we'll have uh, more exciting aspects to each successive phase of the course, much in the same way that Cervantes did as he was writing his novel, right? It became progressively more radical as he went. How available is this, is this MOOC? I mean, what, what do I need to go in and, and do it? The MOOC is available online to anyone who has a connection to the internet. So if you have a device of some sort, a tablet, or a, um, a uh, laptop, here, here's the badges, by the way, for the gamification. Um, you, you, if you have access to the internet, if you have a tablet or a smartphone or a laptop, uh, you can take this course. All of the material is open. That's the point of an, a MOOC, a massive open online course. It's open and free to everyone who has access to the internet. What kind of expectations does the MOOC have of the student? And also, what should the student expect of the MOOC? I think the student should expect to be entertained, uh, not just from the MOOC, but from the novel itself, right? One, one of the main expectations we have is we really hope people read and enjoy the novel. This should be a pleasurable experience. Um, aside from that, we want people to participate. We actually want uh, students or co-participants in this adventure to share their uh, impressions and their ideas uh, in the forum in an active way. We want people to interact online with us and with each other. So the main thing to bring to the course is uh, an open mind because it's a quite radical adventure, uh, um, enthusiasm and a willingness to um, read and find the time in one's day to uh, do this course, right? The advantage of an online course is it's not a specific time, it's up to you, it's at your own pace. Uh, but you need to be dedicated, uh, you need to be enthusiastic, and above all, I think, willing to share. We want other people's ideas. Uh, and weekly, we actually go through the commentary that students uh, provide us and share it uh, online with, with the participants in the course. So for those who want to be involved, how can they go and access the MOOC? Okay, this is very easy. You go to donquixote.ufm.edu, and you can sign up for the English version, which is now live. You can sign up for the Spanish version, which has been online for many weeks. Uh, we are going to have uh, a tremendous time together. Thanks very much, Eric. Thank you, Zach.